Welcome to Unleashing Happiness, the podcast where I teach you how to change your mindset, change your habits, and actually change your life. Hello, and either welcome back or welcome here for the first time. This is Cecilia Hendricks with Unleashing Happiness. Uh, My podcast is all about teaching you ways to change your mindset, change your habits, and honestly change your life. The things that I'm teaching are ways to really focus on getting more fulfillment in your own life, finding ways to have more energy, be more productive, live the life that you really want to live with the focus that you want to have, being in a loving relationship, having a really amazing career, being able to travel the world and see the things that you want to see and experience the things that you want to experience. And what I found in my own journey was that breaking that down, coming into a pragmatic and like really practical way of looking at changing the way that my mind was working, the way I was spending my time, the focus that I was having, like when I would talk to myself or just those moments where I would catch myself just kind of those quiet moments, you know, the ones where you're by yourself and maybe all of a sudden you realize, man, I'm not feeling the way that I want to feel. I'm not getting the fulfillment in my life that I really want and that I'm yearning for. Um, And so I put together this content to really start to share the ways that helped me in hopes that it would start to help other people. And the best part about it was that the more that I've been sharing it, the more that people are sending me messages and saying, holy cow, this has really changed my outlook. It's really changed the way that I'm approaching my day. Uh, And it has provided me fulfillment and happiness. And I am starting to get those things that I want. So if you're on like a manifestation or law of attraction type journey, Sometimes you can run into a cycle of not understanding why it's not working or maybe having success in some areas and not other areas. And that can be like really frustrating and upsetting, uh, especially if you are seeking changes in an area of your life that is really frustrating to you and making you feel down. And of course, anything that you're putting out, where you're putting your attention, that's what you're receiving. So what we talk about here, or what I talk about here, is breaking that down to understanding not only what your identity is now, which means the state that you're dwelling in, where you keep returning, how you feel, your beliefs about yourself and your life, but also the ways that you're able to change that. Habit is not um, a solidified law right? So your habit that you do every single day, what you keep returning to is continuing to give you the life that you have now. So if there's areas that you're not happy in or you're frustrated, well, you have to take a look at those habits that you have, the routines that you have. And it's not just a physical one, but a mental and emotional one as well. The more that you return to something, the more you're confirming to yourself that this is who you are. This is the way things work for you. This is your identity. This is your state. That's what it means to dwell in a state. So today we're going to talk a lot about the habits you have and how they are, they are confirming your identity day to day. So each day you're reconfirming to yourself that, yes, I'm still the same person. I still behave this way. I still think this way. This is still the way things go for me. And then we're going to talk about your attention and start to understand how you can shift your attention more towards what you want. I have two pieces that I want to read to you today. One is a quote from the book Atomic Habits, which is absolutely phenomenal. If you have not read it, I highly recommend it. It's a really great look at kind of our habits and processes that we can take to change those habits. And the other is reading from Neville Goddard's Five Lessons. Um, It's actually the third lesson that he has, Thinking Fourth Dimensionally. But first, I want to give a little bit of an overview of what it means to be in a state or to make an assumption or have an identity of yourself. There are things that you hold very core to you. Maybe you don't even realize it quite yet. But the more that you awaken to this, the more you become aware of it, the more it'll really start to highlight to you and you'll be able to change it. You can only change something that you're aware of. 
But if you consider the fact that you have assumptions and your assumptions are about yourself, kind of the world that you live in, the way things are for you, whether you're lucky, unlucky, healthy, unhealthy, wealthy, poor, you know, loved and desired and treated well or ignored and blocked and really just upset with life and not getting the things that you want. Of course, there's mixes in between there, right? Like those are two very extreme ends. But you have a choice to either continue down the same path and anything that happens externally to you, allow that to confirm your identity, your state, the things that you're just going to receive Or you can say, I have a different desired outcome for myself. I want something different for me. And so I'm going to start moving my attention towards what I actually want, what this desired outcome is. And then what I have found has worked for me was to then add the point of saying, well, if I had this desired outcome, what would be some of those habits that I would have day to day that would put me one step closer to that? If I want to be my healthiest self and I want to feel good and look good in my clothing and I want to feel like I am experiencing the world and I'm just happy and healthy, what are some things that I would do for that? How would I spend my morning? How would my thoughts shift throughout the day? What would I feel when I went to bed at night? What I found for myself and then also from talking to others is that when you're working on your mindset, you're attempting to change your life, you want to shift your identity, you're seeking more fulfillment, you're looking to manifest things into your life, you want to increase your happiness, whatever path it is that you're on, there's this desire to want it to happen overnight. And then when it doesn't, and you wake up that next morning, and maybe a technique of falling asleep in a wish fulfilled assumption did not come to fruition right when you woke up in the morning, then you're frustrated and you're upset and you're like in this cycle and seeking things. And instead, then that's your attention, right? Like that's what you're focusing on. But it becomes really frustrating, And when I said, forget it, I need to find a new path for myself for these bigger things that I want to have in my life, for this difference that I want to be, because I really want something different. I love many aspects of my life, but then there's other areas that I want to actually spend more time in these other aspects, right? Like part of what I have always thought is saying, well, I love this family part of my life. How can I spend more time there? Like I want to be involved there. How can I feel more fulfilled there and still provide to my family? And you really need to identify for you what yours is, what it is that you're seeking and that what you want. And so really consider that. But today we're going to talk about that focus that you give, the attention that you give. And so your assumptions are really your identity. They're your state. Um, And where you're drawing that attention is what you're going to kind of get in life. It's the same way I've shared before about the lucky versus unlucky type study. If you self-identify as unlucky, you are more likely to miss some really amazing opportunities that are right in front of your face because you physically cannot see them. Your brain is not picking up on them because your brain is designed to filter out things that don't conform to what you want to be. Don't conform to the identity that you've set for yourself. If not, we would be completely overwhelmed every single day. There would be just too much coming in at us uh, and we wouldn't be able to concentrate. And this is likely a shift from the way that you've lived before or leading up to this. Um, Or maybe you are like, wait a minute, I've done this in certain areas of my life. I just didn't realize I was consciously doing it. And making the conscious choice to do it now is going to give you a lot of improvement in the areas of your life that you're focused on. So first, I'm going to read from Neville Goddard's lecture, Thinking Fourth Dimensionally. It's part of his five lesson series, which I have always found phenomenal, but I've not gone back to for a while. Uh, And I actually recently, as in yesterday, had a conversation with Tim Grimes um, about uh, kind of this, this lecture and the habits and kind of how our habits 
um, identify the state or can kind of educate us on the state that we're in. So his video should be up sometime today. If it's already up now, I'll put a link to it in the comments so you can kind of hear our conversation. Uh, I definitely think it was a good one. I always enjoy going on Tim's channel and having these conversations with them. And it's nice to kind of get his, you know, thoughts and perception on, you know, being compelled to do certain actions. And that's a lot of what we're talking about in that episode. So here's the pieces from Neville Goddard's uh, lecture. I walk in the assumption that I am. I will not brag about it and tell others. I simply go and tell no man. I feed this state I now like with my attention. I keep it alive within my world by becoming attentive to it. Things I am not attentive to fade and wither within my world, regardless of what they are. They are not just born and then remain unfed. I gave them birth by reason of the fact that I became conscious of being them. When I embody them within my world, that is not the end. That is the beginning. Now I'm a mother who must keep this state alive by being attentive to it. The day that I am not attentive, I have withdrawn my milk from it and it fades from my world. As I become attentive to something else in my world. You can either be attentive to the limitations and feed those and make them mountains, or you can be attentive to your desires. But to become attentive, you must assume you already are that which you wanted to be. So I'm going to read a little bit more of his lecture as well, but I wanted to start there. So if you consider the fact of what you're paying attention to, you really need to ask yourself, am I feeding what I don't want in life? Am I continuing to focus more on that? Or am I waking up each day and choosing to focus on the desired outcome that I want? And I know a lot of times it's easy to get caught up in this. I already have to be that person. And if you're running into those kind of issues, even with just a certain like area of life or a certain out like desire that you're looking for, I would remove worrying about that and instead just start to pay attention to that aim. If you have an aim in mind and you continue to put your attention on that and you don't have to worry about like, well, maybe one day I'll be there. That's not what I mean by the attention. I mean by choosing each day the habits and the mood that you're going to embody based on what desire you're reaching for. You have a choice to wake up and say, you know what, I have decided this is my desired outcome. Mine, for an example, is my desired outcome is to have a a successful business and to share out what I have learned and things that have helped me with others. And I want to reach as many people as possible. And that is my goal. So that is my desired outcome. That is my aim. If I lose some followers on YouTube I don't dwell on that. I don't focus on that. I can make this a very simple focus and it can be for anything, wealth, health, love, life, business, career, whatever it is that you want, but just choose your desired outcome and continue to put your focus and your aim on that. And it's not about, um, being toxically positive, right? I don't know if toxically is a word, but it's not about forcing positivity. It is instead a gentle redirection of, okay, I understand that I feel this way, but instead I'm going to focus here. What can you do right now that is aligned with your desired outcome? It's a very simple mind shift. And even though it is like taking action, that's fine. You don't have to force the action. It's a very simple, relaxed thought process. If I'm this ideal person and this is my desired outcome, what would be something that I would do right now to obtain that desired outcome? If it's opening a business, is there, you know, a website that I could do? Could I start working on content? Could I launch the YouTube channel? Could I make a video? Um, If you want to be a writer, have you written a single paragraph today? If you want to better your mind, have you read a single page of a book today? 
if you want to be a healthier version of yourself, what type of fitness thing have you done for you? Have you gotten up and done some stretches? Did you do meditation today? There is very simple, small acts that you can do that tell yourself, this is my new identity. The quote that I wanted to read from Atomic Habits is, you can choose the identity you want to reinforce with the habits you choose today. So really think about that. You're choosing your habits. There are some that are completely unconscious to you. You are just going through the motions. And now today you can make the choice that you are no longer going to just mindlessly go through your day. You are no longer going to allow the external factors of life to affect the things that you're working on internally. And that is the whole point of this mood and dwelling. A mood and dwelling and a seven day mental diet or doing manifestation or law of attraction or upping your vibration or living in the wish wish fulfilled. It's not complicated. It's making a choice in every moment where you're going to dwell and what you're going to continue to put your attention on. And if you have a thought that's outside of where you want to dwell, who cares? It's just a thought. You assign the meaning to it. You can assign something new for it today. And you can gently remind yourself, oh, we're not going to do that anymore. Um, If you didn't listen to my episode that was on Monday, it would really be a good one for you to go back and listen to. It talks all about these strategies of how to deal with unwanted thoughts. But each day, the habits that you choose to remain in, the thoughts that you choose to continue with, are confirming to yourself, once again, your identity. You are like almost kind of reassuring yourself, yes, this is still the identity I want to keep. This is still the direction I want to go. This is still the person that I want to be because I'm still behaving in the same way. And if you're looking to change that, well, then the way to do that is by making some choices within your habits. And now I'm going back to Neville's lecture. Although today we speak of a third dimensional and fourth dimensional focus, do not think for one moment these ancient teachers were not fully conscious of these two distinct centers of thought within the minds of all men. They personified these two, and they tried to show man that the only thing which robs him of the man he could be is habit. Although it is not law, Every psychologist will tell you that habit is the most inhibiting force in the world. It completely restricts man and binds him and makes him totally blind to what otherwise he should be. Begin now to mentally see yourself as that which you want to be and feast upon that sensation morning, noon, and night. The only reason you and I are functioning as we are today and are not aware of the greater outlook is simply because we are creatures of habit. And habit renders us totally blind to what otherwise we should see. But habit is not law. It acts as though it were the most compelling force in the world. Yet it is not law. We can create a new approach to life. If you and I would spend a few minutes every day in withdrawing our attention from the region of sensation and concentrating it on an invisible state and remain faithful to this contemplation, feeling and sensing the reality of an invisible state, we would in time become aware of this greater world. That's like so amazing. Essentially what Neville is saying, and James Clear is also saying in Atomic Habits, is that you make a choice in your habits. It feels like they are the only thing that you can listen to, that they are a complete law and that you don't have a way around them because there's certain things that bubble up. Maybe smoking would be kind of an example that you're compelled to smoke or you have a intrusive thought and you're compelled to just go down a spiral of thinking that nobody likes you and you have no friends and whatever else comes up for you. But it's nothing more than a habit. It's either a physical habit or a solely emotional habit, but it's all within your mind and you are able to take steps to change those habits. 
You can do that in many different ways that I talk about in a ton of my content. Create interruptions within your routine. Start leaving yourself reminders. Put your new habit so big in your focus that you have no choice but to remember, oh yeah, I'm doing this differently. Put it on your mirror. Add sticky notes to things. Set alarms in your phone that have certain names. There are so many different techniques that you can do to arrest your own attention, to stop yourself within your own tracks and say, I'm not going to continue this way. I'm going to move my attention to and fill in whatever the desired outcome is. Another great way to manage this and to kind of start changing stuff for yourself is to start habit stacking. So there you would take something that you already do. It's something that you do every day. Like for me, If you haven't picked up yet, it would be making a cup of coffee. So every day after I make my cup of coffee, I'm going to, and then I insert something else. What I did for one of my habit stacks that was really fantastic for me was while my coffee was brewing, I unload the dishwasher. So we always run the dishwasher at night before bed. Got a family that lives here. We definitely go through a lot of dishes. Uh, And so then the next morning, um, I can unload the dishwasher while my coffee is brewing. You can also do something like while your coffee is brewing that you do some morning stretches or you step outside to get the morning sun or you write out some affirmations for yourself or you sit down and you read a couple pages of a book. It's whatever is aligned with this person that you want to be. Whatever is aligned with how you would see your ideal self if you were living this ideal life and you can just start to stack those throughout the day. I usually take my dog for a walk every day and I was like, well, sometimes I get a little bored on these walks. It's fine. I like walking and listening to the birds and etc. but only for about 10 minutes and then my attention is kind of done with it. Uh, So what I started doing was habit stacking by listening to a podcast Um, or I'll listen to a motivational speaker like in an audio book, something that really kind of pumps me up and makes me feel good about the choices that I'm making. And what I'll find is that I'll go around the block a couple of times to finish that podcast or to finish that episode that I'm listening to. If you're seeking more of a connection with humans that are in your life, you could also use that time to call somebody or maybe you decide while I'm folding laundry, I'm going to call my mom Um, while my coffee's brewing. I'm going to call my mom. I'm going to send a text out to five friends, you know, every day before I get in the car to drive to work. Um, no, I said before no texting and driving, (laughs) but so there's things that you can do that align to this person that you want to be. That's really simple. And it takes the pressure off of seeking this like massive overnight change. And it just makes you happier, right? Like I talk a lot about the daily list of joys, start habit stacking your list of joys, Really focus on doing something from your list every single day. Schedule 10 minutes out for yourself to do something from your list and become really mindful about that list. If you're new here, first episode that you've listened to, first, welcome. I'm really happy that you're here. But second, uh, go back to some of my content um, and find like the list of joys. I definitely have a blog post about it as well. My website ceciliahendricks.com. I'll link that one in the show notes, uh, just in case you want a reminder about doing a list of joys each day. And I would really love to hear from you about the habit stacks that you're doing or the changes that you're doing in your life. Please, if you have found this useful, shoot me a note. Uh, It's Unleashing Happiness at CeciliaHendricks.com. I'll put the email down below as well. But definitely let me know like what's working for you. What kind of habit stacks are you doing? Or what is your plan? Um, If you are like, wait a minute, that's amazing. I'm going to start habit stacking in this way. Share with me either shoot me an email or if you're listening to this on YouTube, um, put it down in the comments. I just love the interaction. So definitely feel free to reach out. And with that, I hope that you have an absolutely beautiful week and I will talk to you soon.
Thank you again for joining me today. If you'd like to learn more about all things going on with me, go ahead and visit my website at ceciliahendricks.com. 